Well, hello everyone. Happy New Year and welcome to Global Monastery. It's so good to be back with you. My name is Abby and we are kicking off uh, this new year looking at the book of Job. If you are familiar with the Old Testament book of Job, you know that it's largely a book about suffering. And um, it's a book that raises a lot of questions for many of us because uh, the main character in a story, the story is a man named Job. And Job uh, suffers deeply and honestly and painfully. And throughout the story, uh, you become aware of the truth that God has allowed this innocent man, Job, to suffer. Of course, there's a lot of mystery in that. There's a lot of questions that surface for us around those particular details of the story. Uh, the first question that generally comes up is that age-old question of the Odyssey. It's an important question. Uh, if there is a God who is indeed all-loving and he's also all-powerful, how, why does that God allow innocent people like Job to suffer? Like people all over the world in this very moment experiencing the painful reality of suffering. Why? It's a really important question. And I'm just going to say up front, it's not a question that this particular book answers. God never comes out forthright with it and said, here is why, let me tell you. Nonetheless, it's a very powerful book because the question it does invite us to consider, to wrestle with, to journey alongside Job in, is an equally important question, and it's this. What does it mean to suffer faithfully? What does it mean to walk through suffering, an experience we will all have faithfully with God? See, at the end um, of the book, after we've endured chapters of sort of honest and heartbreaking conversation between Job and his friends and interactions then between Job and God as God answers Job out of this great big storm. Job says this to God. This is the very final chapter, chapter 42, verses 1 through 6. Job answered the Lord, I know you can do anything. No plan of yours can be opposed successfully. You said, who is this darkening counsel without knowledge? I have indeed spoken about things I didn't understand. Wonders beyond my comprehension. You said, listen, and I will speak. I will question you, and you will inform me. My ears had heard about you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I relent and find comfort on dust and ashes. See, there's something about Job's honest and terrible experience of suffering that brings him into closer contact with the truth about God. He sees for himself something profound and different about who God is, not despite his suffering, but in the midst of it. The Old Testament theologian Ellen Davis says it this way. She says, the sufferer who keeps looking for God has in the end privileged knowledge. The one who complains to God, pleads with God, rap rails at God, does not let God off the hook for a minute. She is at last admitted to a mystery. She passes through a door that only pain will open and is thus qualified to speak of God in a way that others, whom we generally call more fortunate, cannot speak. Now, don't mishear me. This doesn't mean that we diminish or even celebrate suffering. It's painful. We don't choose it. We don't wish it on people. And yet, if we can stay in conversation with God through it, when it inevitably enters our story we will know God differently. We will be able to say, I had heard rumors of this, but now, God, I see you. Some of my best friends in the world have undergone uh, tremendous suffering after their four-year-old son became very ill with a virus. That virus traveled to his brain and caused irreparable damage. Um, and they're deeply faithful people, despite this tragedy. I was um, recently processing some of the experience with them and Jason, who's the dad of Justice, the young boy, he made the comment that his faith would never be the same. And I was curious about that. So I said, like, in a good way. Do you mean in a good way? <laughs> and he responded, in an honest way. 
And I kind of got the chills thinking about that. Like that is Job's story. And I think in, in some way, it's an, enc an encouragement to us. And I mean that word in the truest sense to, to be encouraged is actually to receive courage. It's an encouragement to us because we will at various points in our life encounter suffering. We don't choose it. We don't wish it. We don't want it. We don't celebrate it. And yet Job reminds us, we too can know God differently because of it. May it be so. Let's pray together. God, as we enter into a new year and a new season, uh, in the darkness of these winter months, we acknowledge that um, there is so much in this world that we do not understand. And, and it's so tempting to ask that question, why? Why is this happening? God, you can hold that question with us. But God, I pray that we would also turn our attention um, to you in a new way to look for you in the moments of pain, to look for you, to wrestle with you, to honestly speak out to you, to cry out, to rail against. And that the end, the outcome might be a heart that is more in touch with the, the vastness and the mystery and the comfort and the power and the love of a good God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.